uh, doing some Christmas decorations. I know I'm late in the game. Don't start. Uh, but uh, I want to kind of talk to you about uh, switching out the Smoke Eater 908 uh, mini ring out. I actually did it last night, and uh, I want to do it again for video purposes. Uh, here's what he originally gave me. Uh, it's an Arizona iced tea, uh, 23 ounce can that he cut down to about 12 ounces. And he had the wick on there, and I just tried to rip, rip the wick off. And it wasn't really happening, it's got some glue that's on it pretty good. So I decided, let's see if I can actually do a DIY uh, move from one pod to another. And uh, I really suck at DIYs, by the way. And uh, I was able to do it last night, it took a while, but uh, I figured it out, and I switched over to this uh, green tea can, but it's kind of a foo foo color. I wasn't too happy with it. And it's a little bit taller, which still fits into the, uh, the cook kit. So uh, I was able, this is about 13 and a half ounces as opposed to 12 ounces. It's a little bit taller, I don't know if you can see. And uh, I went searching last night, and I got a can that had some nice blue in it, because I'm water monkey baby, gotta represent Fowler Loco. <laughs> it's an alcoholic drink. It's absolutely disgusting. I tried it. 12% alcohol, fantastic. It's like they, I don't know, they ground up a Smurf, throw in some flavored ass, and carbonated it. I was like, oh, this actually passed taste test. Fowler Loco, nasty ass can of uh, alcoholic drink. I don't know, man. I don't drink beer often, but when I do, I put a fair yingling. This was nasty. Right, enough about the nasty talk. Uh, let's uh, let's talk about what we're gonna do and uh, how we're gonna do it. Okay, so basically what we're gonna do is we're going to cut the can, and then we're going to fit in the ring. But there's a few other steps uh, in between. So let's go over the tools I'll be using today. I uh, will be using a permanent marker to mark where I'm gonna cut, needle nose pliers to get out the ring. I'll show you that on video. Uh, I use uh, these wire cutters just to cut the top of the can off that uh, this hard part out and a pair of scissors. Now these are my work scissors from my office and uh, I'm not using the house scissors because the house scissors belong to my fiance and uh, if, if you're out there and you have a, a significant other and you use their scissors to cut something that would dull the blade they will probably stab you in the neck. So we'll avoid the next stab, get your own. <laughs> and a hammer to bang in the ring. I'd like to uh, shout out to Stick and to uh, Wooden Arrows for uh, doing their videos, which gave me confidence to try it on my own. It looked pretty simple, so uh, I saw their videos and said, you know what, I think I could do that, and I did. So <laughs> this is my video on how to do it as well. So if, if you want to see other videos, Wooden Arrows has got one, Stick has got one. He's got a couple of them actually. So uh, okay, let's uh, get on to uh, the taking the ring out and me measuring where we're going to cut and all that good stuff. Here's the ring. I don't know if you can see that. I'll try to get closer. Uh, it kind of nests in the pot. Uh, there's a warning, you get, uh, this, this particular ring that came with the mini heat is good for these 23 ounce cans. I made a mistake of grabbing like a monster can that was 16 something ounces and uh, the ring was way too big for it. So you want something that's in the 23 ounce range that will fit uh, this Fowler Loco crap ass drink. This is, where is it? Did I pass it? 23 and a half ounces. So I, I think that should work. We'll find that together. So. Take the ring out, it's pretty simple. Get a pair of needle nose pliers and you just gently tug on it all the way around. It takes a little bit to get it going, but there we go. Bam. See how easy that was? You see how pliable it is now? It's crazy. Alright. Step two would be measuring this thing off. So I'm going to use the original can he gave me because that uh, seems to be about right. And uh, take the marker. I'm going to lay it basically right on top of it. And I'm just going to mark it. It 
it's uh, this can is like camouflaged with some red and I'm using a red marker because that's all we got. We don't have a black one. And it's blending in with the red. So that should make this video kind of interesting. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you'll see it. Uh, obviously this is taking a lot longer than it should because I'm uh, being careful. Alright, I don't know if you can see that. I see through the, uh, the U that's going all the way around. I like the colors too because I'm a Giants fan. It's got some Giants colors in there. Giants aren't doing so great this year. Their offensive line is laughable. We got no run game and our D-backs are shit. <laughs> Somehow we're winning games. I don't know. So uh, hopefully do good tomorrow. All right. Uh, what's next? All right. It's all these it's wire cutters. Just uh, kind of get up in there. Kind of get through the top of that. You got a little playroom on the top, so whatever. Just uh, just enough so you can start getting the scissors in and start cutting around. And there we go. Scissors are in. I just like to. I think I got this from wooden arrows. This is kind of quite nutty. And then you can be more precise on where you want to cut. That's basically what I'm doing. Seems like an easy thing to do. Now you're going to notice when you're cutting this can, you're going to get some real jagged edges. You can fix that up later on. That doesn't seem to be too much of a problem, see? Unless, well, I'm super sped when it comes to these things, but yeah, see all those jagged edges? You can, uh, you can take care of that, no problem. I'm going to cut myself. <laughs> and now it's time to do some precision cutting. Just want to cut, I try to cut on the line, smoky on the line, so a little bit above it, hey, whatever, man. Your pot. Have at it. There we go. I find that some wood is a little bit temperamental. For some reason, doing these precision cuts. Whatever. I must have said whatever like 200,000 times already. I apologize. That's a kind of word in my head. Whatever. <laughs> Go past the line. Uh, oh, there's a red watch. I'm going to guess where the line is. I'm going to guess it's right there. <laughs> see the red? <laughs> what do you see? There's a red blotch. This line's like invisible. So you can see uh, how jagged this damn thing is. So there it is. And that's uh, how pretty jagged it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, trim that up with the knife, well, not with the knife, with the scissors. Try to make that very even because if you if you have those edges in there and you're trying to put the ring in, they're going to give you one hell of a time. So as smooth as you can make it, I don't have any sandpaper or anything like that to smooth out the edges but uh, I was able to trim it up pretty good with the scissors last night so I'm pretty confident I can replicate that right now so let me do that off camera and then uh, we'll work on the ring and the other stuff okay I've uh, smoothed it out pretty good with the uh, scissors you can see that many jagged edges and it seems relatively smooth again jagged edges tend to snag up on the uh, on the ring and it becomes really hard to actually set it. So, uh, 
I want to give you a dumb moment <laughs> that happened to me last night when I was doing this one. Uh, clean out the pot before you start working with the ring. Uh, I just, I was so excited just to get this the, the ring in and uh, playing around. Finally got it in, banged it in, and I picked it up and I touched the inner wall and it was all sticky. So it meant, it meant the uh, inside of this thing was going to be sticky and if I was going to be boiling water, it could have a bacteria problem. So wash your stuff out, then start working it. So uh, I wash this thing out already. All right, so I think it's all ready to do, ready to rock out. Here's the ring. And I'm going to time myself to see how long it takes because yesterday took an insane amount of time. And uh, now uh, I'm going to see exactly how long it takes. So hopefully I do well. Starting now. You gotta have like a, a gentle touch. Do is uh, I like to bend, bend the outer part of the can out a little bit, kind of opens it up a little bit. It makes life a little easier for you. Not much. Now don't, don't uh, don't assume it's going to take you this long to do it. Ooh. Oh, you bastard! Because I'm a sped. <laughs> and uh, I'm not really good at this stuff. You should see how long it takes me to make a soda, soda can so Oh, dude, I got it. Oh, that's in. Sweet. A minute! <laughs> Let's see if I'll screw this up. Now, here's the tricky part, too. Hammer time! Hammer time! <laughs> You've got to kind of counterbalance this when you're banging it in. When you're banging one end, you got to kind of keep the, the other side because it'll pop out on you and then you gotta start from scratch and that is miserable. So I just want to double check to make sure this can... Is, yeah, that's in. Alright, this is where it, it can get ugly. You gotta just... <laughs> there it is, man! Ah! I'm glad I didn't stop the timer. Smoke eater, bro. You have the patience of a saint. Because, uh, I don't really want to dedicate this much time to uh, developing a ring. So, more props to you, bro. And anybody else who makes a ring out there in uh, Stove Land. Oh, I almost had it. Turning it helps, kind of. Oh, I had it, and I lost it. There it is. Okay. Round two. In case you're wondering, two and a half minutes. Thank uh -huh. 
directional, even though I'm totally a spit. And uh, yeah, this aluminum ring, you can take a pretty good beating. I'm not slamming down on this thing. Yeah, that's it. She's done. Well, that's, that's nice and rigid, too. Hello. How long I take? Five minutes, 51 seconds. <laughs> It'd be nice if you could see that. Five minutes, 51 seconds. <laughs> All right, so six minutes. So it's like a 15 minute project. Totally longer yesterday, uh, but once the camera was, was doing, me, doing me good. So uh, yeah, see how this looks. That's yeah, basically exactly the same height. Bam. And it's a little bit bigger than that. Bam. So, yeah, I'll show you the difference. See that? Very pliable. That's a pliable. So it's pretty firm. The ring really uh, makes this thing nice and rigid, and it makes it a, I don't think you can really, uh, as long as you're careful, you're not going to uh, crush the can, in my opinion. So uh, let's see how much water we can put in this thing, and then we'll call it a day. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is one cup, eight ounces or 250 milliliters. That's right, I've hit all the different measurements today. One cup. That's too easy. So the idea was this thing could be 12 ounces, so we'll put another four ounces in. Let me end up on it, that's four ounces. Let's make sure that's on the line. Yeah, that's good. So that's half a cup, it's 12 ounces. Pretty good, but I like to get it uh, just underneath the uh, the lip of the ring. It seems to be just enough water for me, so I think that's going to be another ounce. Here's an ounce. Yep. So we're looking at 12 and a half, 13 ounces of water that this pot can hold. That is a nice pot, let me tell you. Looking, looking pretty uh, snazzy. Water Monkey Blue Pot. What's up? And if you, in case you're wondering, if you haven't picked up on some other videos that I've done, I use Reflectix Pot Grabber. And it makes life a little easier. And it's only two grams. Bam!